Hi guys, welcome back. Three videos in three days. That's if you are watching it on a Friday. This might end up being posted on the Saturday, but still the effort has been made to make up for lost time. So as you can see, I'm sporting a different hairstyle today. This is known as my humidity hairstyle or otherwise the pineapple updo. And I've just noticed that if I actually, because I've got no flowers, despite hinting at my husband for several days, that I've had to put a plant there to take up the space. If I move my pineapple hair there, I literally look like a pineapple. I'm sure that's a fashion trend that will catch on, <laughs> or not. So anyway, we're going to start the video slightly differently. I'm saving ginge and whinge, preach and leech, to the very end of the video. So if you want to skip on and just hear about the Harry and Meghan stuff, then you can toodle along to the end. But the rest of us that are here that want a what's it called a palette cleanser we want to hear about our real royals and the good things that the royal family are shining a light on she has forever tainted that expression for me drawing attention to and we are going to start with none other than the princess of wales catherine yesterday met with health visitors and representatives from the university of oxford at the riversleigh park children's center in nuneaton the Royal Foundation Centre for Early Childhood has funded a £50,000 grant towards studying the impact of distress in young babies. The study will assess how babies interact with their environment, how they use eye contact, expressions, vocals, we all know babies use their vocals, to express themselves and it will hopefully help get a better understanding to when babies are unhappy. Now I know lots of you will possibly say, you know, you just listen to your baby. Obviously, as you know, I don't have children, but I have got friends, family, I've seen so many babies and I've actually been there for a few births, live births myself, so I know all about it. But I do believe that some parents struggle. I have seen actually a friend of mine many years ago, she actually paid for a specialist, a baby specialist, to help her settle her baby in the first week. She said it was the best money she's ever spent. But what Catherine is working towards with the early childhood, and in particular this study, it's to educate health visitors on how they can provide the best support and the best advice to parents that might be struggling. Also teaching them how they they can pick up when there's something more wrong with the baby he is or she is showing signs of distress so they can then enable specialist support as of when it's needed they don't come with a guidebook do they babies they're all different so i think it's about helping to find the best way to educate people to make sure that the babies are happy and more importantly that parents and parenting can stay as stress-free as possible which i'm sure some of you will laugh at <laughs> Now, one little baby that was there, who obviously clearly has not too long ago finished their lunch, had absolutely no problems in expressing themselves. And you have the gift supporting I love the way that Catherine just completely stops the conversation, turns and then congratulates the little baby like he's going to understand her. Well done. Well done for bringing up that burp. She is such a, I say a natural, of course she's a natural, she's a mother of three children herself. But when I say she's a natural, it's in this environment. You know, like Princess Anne, it's with the military. Sophie, it's very much with agriculture and farming. Prince William, the environment. Catherine, it's all to do with children and childcare. All of the members of the royal family seem to find their niche. And I would say this very much is Catherine's. Now, speaking of Sophie, now the Duchess of Edinburgh and Prince William, they did a double engagement together. It's not a double engagement, they attended an engagement jointly together. Blah. <laughs> Now, while I'm trying to get my words out, I'm going to say thank you to everyone that commented. And trust me, there were, <laughs> I think, several hundred of you trooping the colour, not trooping of the colour. It's one of those things. I don't have a teleprompter. I don't have staff. I have script. I freestyle. I make mistakes. But that was really funny because once I saw it, I was like, oh, why did I do that? I know that. But then when the comments come in, because there's so many of you, it was like every two or three. And I was like, yes, I know. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I know. Yeah, it was just quite funny to watch it all come up going, yes, troop in the colour in capital letters. Some people even put like little horns and emojis shouting 
same either side. But yes, it's Troop in the Colour. Thank you, everybody. So Prince William and the Duchess of Edinburgh were both looking absolutely fabulous, I have to say. And they were attending a special screening of Rhino Man. The documentary centres around saving the rhinos and the courageous and selfless men and women that put their lives on the line every single day to protect them from poachers. Martin Matembu was a ranger trainer who lost his life, so his friend Ruben de Kock continues his legacy by helping to train the next generation of rangers. I'm in no doubt that it will be a beautiful and inspiring documentary, but I can just take a guess that you might need your tissue for some of it. As many know, Prince William has been a huge advocate into banning the ivory trade for several decades now. And even Queen Camilla's brother was a massive advocate. He sadly lost his life a couple of years ago. And he is all about saving the elephants, if people didn't know that. So that's why there was a bit of a, not a hoo-ha, but to do with the ivory. Prince William wants all of the ivory completely destroyed. That is inside the palaces. And it's one of those things, do you destroy historical artefacts? Do you keep them on display? I mean, this is something that is part of history but I don't like ivory but it's more to do with stopping it and stopping animals being killed so swiftly moving on back to the fact that we had two fabulous royals out together Sophie and William are very very close there was a very sweet and candid moment where Prince William actually introduced Sophie as his aunt rather than just the official formal titles which I thought was really sweet we've seen many photographs and video clips of you know members of the royal family uh, when they're out and about together but I would say that Sophie and Catherine are incredibly close. We see them doing events and public things with their families over Christmas period. They are an incredibly close-knit family and that's why it makes it so bizarre of a lot of the accusations that Harry is now throwing around. But we're not going to talk about him just yet because yesterday was another big day for the Duchess of Edinburgh where she was made the Dame Grand Cross of the Order of St John's at Buckingham Palace. Most of us are familiar with the, uh, the term of St John's Order because of St John's Ambulance and Sophie has actually been working with St John's Ambulance and the Order of St John's since 2004. She actually spent her birthday volunteering at St John's Ambulance. She was invested the honour by the Duke of Gloucester who had previously held the position. Sophie was actually appointed the Dame Grand Cross last year by the Queen but obviously with the Queen's passing and then the build up to the coronation the ceremony has only just taken place. So it's another lovely thing for Sophie to have another wonderful honour as she is now very much front and centre of the royal family. And I'm not quite done with Sophie because we've got another story because I know some of you absolutely love Sophie because what's not to love about her? Sophie on the same day Day, it was spotted staying nice and cool in a beautiful white shirt dress as she opened a new office for the National Institute of Blind People in London. The Queen was patron of the charity for more than 70 years and as I said it's nice to see Sophie continuing with patronages that were close to the Queen's heart. So Sophie is an avid sight campaigner and has travelled to many countries around the world as well as helping to draw attention to many UK organisations and charities especially to do with the prevention of childhood blindness. It's something Sophie feels incredibly passionate about after her daughter Lady Louise was born with a severe squint or the proper terminology is a strabismus but most people call it a lazy eye. I myself was born with one of those and much like Lady Louise whose eyesight thankfully is a hundred percent according to her mother my eyesight was also corrected and it's only when I'm slightly drunk now do you see my eye just wander off and not do as it's told. <laughs> Now getting on to another royal lady, we have Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, who has been visiting the RAF base, Bryce Norton. The Princess Royal holds the position of being their honorary air commodore. She was there to oversee the standing down parade of the number 47 squadron and the retirement of the C-130 Hercules aircraft. The princess conducted her inspection and spent time chatting to the various members of the squadron after a performance by the central band of the Royal Air Force. See, even the military aircraft get a lovely send-off when they go into retirement. Princess Anne takes all of her patronages very, very seriously, and none more so than uh, all of her military appointments. She actually holds over 60 different military positions and patronages across the UK, Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. It's not surprising that Princess Anne is light across so many different countries, all the different regiments, all the different military, all around the world. And that's the thing with Princess Anne. This is why she's so admired, because Princess Anne does put duty, she puts integrity, she puts loyalty, she puts family first. 
she represents everything, all of the principles to do with being part of the military family. And this is where I think the royal family made a mistake by giving Harry the Captain General of the Royal Marines. They made a mistake because they thought that he would honour it and maybe old Harry pre Meghan Harry, he might well have done. But how amazing would it have been to have given this position the first time going to a woman, Prince Philip handing that down to Princess Anne. I think it would have been wonderful. So they definitely made a mistake. So going from someone who is well liked and respected all around the world, a member of the royal family, to someone who briefly joined the royal family who is not respected or liked all around the world. You know I ended yesterday's video with the end about, oh, Spotify finally announced that they are not renewing Meghan's contract. There will be no archetype season two. Yay! Well, the newspapers decided that they were going to run with it. So this morning I woke up and it's a sea of it all everywhere. So there's lots of memes going around. Everyone finds it absolutely hilarious that Meghan yet again has been cancelled. But good points that have been raised, when you think that they have decided not to renew for season two, it makes you think, well, wasn't Megan an award-winning podcast? She was going to knock Joe Rogan off of his perch, who I'm sure is absolutely peeing his pants over it, if he even thinks about Megan after she and Harry tried to get him kicked off Spotify. Did you know that? Megan and Harry actually complained to Spotify. They expressed their deep concerns over continuing to work for Spotify for the fact that Joe Rogan is allowed to continue to spread misinformation on their platform. You just couldn't make it up. It is absolutely the pot calling the kettle black. But it does make you wonder, all of the stories that came out, how Meghan was winning the top of the lists, all of the charts that we saw Meghan was number one around the world, all of the millions that were spent on the billboards in some of the most expensive parts of America. I mean, Times Square, can you imagine how much it actually cost to put up these billboards? Millions. So it's come as no great shock that Spotify have said that they will not be honouring the 20 million because Harry and Meghan have, well, basically, they've not produced any anything. More amusingly, it depends where you actually read the story. Some of the stories are saying that uh, Spotify has dropped Harry and Meghan, Meghan's been booted, Meghan's been cancelled. Believable. But other certain outlets that we know that favour Meghan, like Variety magazine, have worded it slightly differently, that the couple have agreed to go separate ways, or Harry and Meghan are the ones that decided to end the collaboration. And you're thinking to yourself, sure Jan, of course they did. But don't worry, before lots of squaddies, or as people are now calling them, the salties, because they keep crying salty tears, which I think's hilarious, the determined duchess, and I quote, is taking her podcast to another streaming platform. Yay, said no one. But as I have previously said in several other videos, it took near enough, what, two, three years to get this off the ground. From the first moment we saw it was being announced with Meghan sitting on the sofa with a huge amount of hair and a lemon dress. Harry looking like he'd been sucking lemons most of the day to what we eventually ended up two and a half, three years later. They had producers that had worked for Oprah, helping getting it off the ground. Even the big name stars that Oprah, I believe, was the one that actually got them to try and help get this podcast lifted and it still fell completely flat. Not only that, Rebecca Sananez, she did a post on TikTok because she was head of Archwell Audio and she turned around and said that she was the one that created archetypes. It was her idea. She produced it. She put all of the work in to, to creating it. So it's like Megan just came in and recorded her voice, as I said, to talk about herself. And that was pretty much Megan's input. But Rebecca, obviously very unhappy with the way that she was treated, she quit Archwell Audio. And as I said, she went online and ranted about her former boss. She didn't say it in so many words, but we all know who she was working for and what podcast it was that was getting awards and she had had no recognition or it would seem thanks. So we can now add failed podcaster to the long list of things that Megan has failed at. She was a failed actress. I mean okay suits you count suits but it was one gig her entire career unless you count the little the little cameos that she played. I don't think that really makes her a Hollywood A-lister star do you? She also spectacularly failed at being a royal. Her TIG blog, whilst people say it was incredibly popular, I don't really believe that the TIG was really that epic. The 
sparkle sparkle as it would seem has clearly faded she has lost her sparkle or as one person said on twitter called be nice which has been my favorite comment of the day and i'm going to end the video with it you can dip a turd in glitter but it does not make it tiffany and co couldn't have put it better myself. So on that wonderful sparkly note, it is the weekend. The weekend is upon us. I hope you all have a wonderful one. Um, enjoy watching Troopin' of the Colour, those of you that can watch it, for those of you that can't or don't really want to spend the time watching it, and you just like a brief lowdown, I will be back with you next week with all of the photos and all of the gossip. So take care for now. Happy Friday. Bye.